Local 7 and 103.7 WTIB present Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. News, sports, and community information and everything that's going on around town. Now, with Talk of the Town, here's your host, Henry Hinton. All righty then. Welcome in. It's Talk of the Town uh, for uh, Wednesday, May 14th. Good to have everybody here. Today's the first day of the North Carolina legislative session. And so we're going to focus on that in this hour. And uh, Ninth District House of Representative member Brian Brown will join us live from Raleigh here in a few minutes. We'll talk about some of the big issues facing the state legislature in the short session, which begins today in Raleigh. I used to say, hold on to your wallet when the legislature would go back to uh, would go back to Raleigh, back in the old Bev Purdue, Mark Bass Knight days. Now I just say, let the uh, let the cram down by the liberal media begin. I'm sure, all the news observer. In fact, it's how, already kind of started. How long do you anticipate this? Uh, how short do you anticipate this? Short They're going to be out by June thirtieth. You think? They're going to be out by June 30th. I think there's all sorts of reasons for that. A, Tom Tillis has to run a Senate campaign, and he's also the Speaker of the House. B, Phil Berger is the uh, most powerful man in the legislature. He's the president of the Senate, and his son has a, um, a congressional runoff for a congressional seat in Greensboro in July. And I don't think they're want. Oh, I, you know, I've been. Everybody keeps telling me they don't want any controversial stuff to come up in this session. But uh, it's already beginning to happen. There was a, um, there was a, a, you know, some folks got slapped around yesterday, and I, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. It has to do. I mentioned this uh, uh, earlier. The um, there are a couple of bills that have to do with insurance and what is insured in North Carolina and what is not. Number one, the chiropractors want you to, uh, they, they want, they want uh, more of their services uh, covered. And as we talked about earlier, very few people in North Carolina go to a chiropractor, so I don't think that one's going anywhere because I certainly don't want my insurance premiums going up. I, I, I saw the millions of dollars it would cost uh, insurance premiums for us, for all of us. And uh, only like 4% of the people in the state of North Carolina have ever been to a chiropractor. So I don't think that's going to go anywhere. But the one that is, uh, the, the one that it's pretty hot right now, and I think you're going to hear a lot about it in the next few weeks. And there was a, uh, there was a meeting on it yesterday. And the question is what to do about children with autism who have no insurance. I didn't realize this until recently. North Carolina is one of the few states that does not allow autism to be covered by insurance. Hmm. And so um, I know that uh, uh, one of the ECU basketball coaches, Kyle Robinson, who's the, you know Kyle? He's the director of, no, he he's the director of basketball operations. He has an autistic child. He is really, really pushing this. I know he's been, and we'll talk to Representative Brown about this in a few minutes. But, you know, the, the big subject, of course, is going to be school teacher and government employee salaries. And the, governor, the governor's budget will come out later today. And what we're hearing is that the governor is proposing 2% across the board uh, for uh, veteran teachers. Of course, you know, he's already on record with saying that he wants everyone uh, teaching school to make no less than 35000 and um, and then veteran teachers who got upset last fall or earlier, I guess earlier this year, uh, in February, when he came out with his his uh, new teacher plan, they've been screaming about that. And uh, so he's talking about um, a, a minimum of two percent, but some added incentives and all that. But the you know nobody knows where the money's going to come from. They're four hundred and fifty million in the hole starting because revenue projections have come in so far under, and then on top of that, that old bugaboo is back again, the uh, Medicaid overruns. Medicaid is going to bankrupt the state. Can you imagine what would have happened 
if we had expanded Medicaid, all you liberals who were screaming Medicaid expansion, I actually made that comment yesterday to the governor when he was over at ECU and to uh, Bill Daltridge, the uh, Secretary of Administration. And Secretary Daltridge had an interesting response to that. He said, well, it's expanding anyway without us trying to expand it. I mean, they just, they just cannot get their arms around the whole Medicaid problem. And so we'll talk to uh, Representative Brown about that. And also, what's on his agenda for this session? I know that there are some Eastern North Carolina issues uh, Concern about funding for education, as always, community colleges and uh, ECU. The med school continues to, um, to do everything possible to uh, keep from having their funding cut. And uh, those of us in a position to talk to some of these legislators are just trying to make sure that they understand the difference. There are two medical schools owned by the state of North Carolina. One is in Greenville. One is in Chapel Hill. The one in Chapel Hill is owned by the university, and they also own a hospital. The one in Greenville does not own a hospital. We have an operating agreement with Vidant Medical Center and Vidant Health. And the funding here is a problem in today's environment. Yeah, and UPL and, and SADCA, which is the Set-Off Debt Collection Act, two major issues that the Brody School is dealing with. And SADCA is going to be an uphill challenge. That's going to be a big part of uh, Brian Brown's challenge, I think, and, and other Eastern North Carolina guys that support the ECU Brody School of Medicine is to try to, for people who don't know what UPL is, it's an upper payment limit for doctors in the Medicaid uh, um, in the reimbursement category, they have what they call an upper payment limit for medical schools. Uh, and uh, that's been a battle the last two years. And East Carolina needs that money. Indeed. And uh, the Sotka thing is, the, is, is the, the mechanism by which other government entities are allowed to go out and garnish people's uh, tax returns and their, and their lottery winnings when they don't pay their bills. But they're disallowing, you know, government can do it, but the, but the medical school can't do it. So that's interesting. Yeah, you can see the Brody, I think the Brody uh, physician practice plan can end up forfeiting $6.3 in 2014. Yeah. Over that, it's, it's a big, big, big You're issue. up on this, McGee. I'm very impressed. Mm -hmm. Matty Engelbrecht from WITN is at the news desk this morning. Good morning, Matty. Yeah. Good morning. And uh, we've got uh, some uh, some rocky weather coming in Thursday night. Yeah. Tell, yep. tell us about it. What's, uh, what's getting ready to happen here? Because it's going to really change the weekend temperatures, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, we're going to get back. Yeah, we've been above average this entire month. Uh, temperatures have exceeded their normal uh, for a good percentage of this month, and we'll finally get back to average and feel a little bit more like spring rather than summer, which I'm mm -hmm. sure you've, you've noticed. So hope for that uh, Saturday and Sunday. All right. Very good. Yeah. Is that everything you wanted? Anything that, was, that was very concise, that okay? very good. I mean, yeah. you know, if you'd have had a map, it would have been better. You could have gotten up there. You also have stubble this morning, which I noticed you never have when you're doing the weather on TV. That's the, uh, the vacation beard. You been on vacation? A little bit. Went up to uh, Baltimore for a couple of days. Michelle's birthday was on Sunday. Oh, yeah? yeah? Why Baltimore? Coach Carl would have been happy with that. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about it. Coach, um, he went to, went to your hometown. Orioles. You, know, we're you go see the, the Orioles? Yep, they were playing the Tigers. So, uh, oh, that's you... the true story. Your Tigers. <laughs> Eastern North Carolina's only Detroit Tigers fan. <laughs> Did you eat at the Italian restaurant? No, that... she had one picked out. Wit and Wisdom is mm -hmm. where we went, which is right on the Inner Harbor there. Good. Yeah. All right, let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a text from chiropractors. Uh-oh. Uh, I have a chiropractor that says, ouch, I understand your sentiments, but your numbers are not accurate. I, I just was quoting what was in Carolina Journal yesterday. There was an article, doctor, go to carolinajournal.com. There was an article on there that said that. And, you know, that, that I guess he's disputing the 4%. I don't know if that's true or not. But that was on the uh, article from carolinajournal.com yesterday. So, Like I said, there'll be a lot of discussion about this in the mm -hmm. <laughs> In the, yeah. uh, in the uh, legislative session coming up. Uh, 13 minutes uh, after the hour. Let's see what else we get. Oh, a um, couple things. Uh, tomorrow morning on Thursday, we open up the phone lines here uh, at our, our main studios at 9 a.m. And it's another uh, of our half-price golf sales. 
This time we're putting Ironwood Country Club on sale tomorrow morning. A limited number of passes to sell. These things always sell fast. And so uh, take the number. By the way, McGee, we need to give we, – I was told yesterday we need to start giving the other switchboard number. We, oh. were, we were given a 1037 number. Yep. I was told that number d- does not – does not roll over as much as the main switchboard number. So here, write this number down. Here's the number to call if you want to buy half price golf in Ironwood tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. It's 252 355 8822. That's the main switchboard. 355 8822. At 9 a.m. Thursday morning, you can start calling and the Lee Trevino designed Ironwood Country Club, beautiful golf course here in Greenville. We'll go on sale. We're going to sell two passes for $50. That's $25 a round, and that includes cart. Get your credit cards ready. We'll have operators standing by right at 9 a.m. on Thursday morning. I think they'll go fast, just like Iron Cutter Wood. Creek from last Yeah, we last sold week. Cutter Creek last week. I think we sold uh, all that we had. I think we sold 50 Cutter Creek passes in, um, in something like 30 minutes. You can't. You cannot find a better deal for a golf course. Well, you know, people keep asking us all year. Are you doing the golf club again this year? For a golf course that's in the shape that Ironwood is in, for the kind of course it is, not a better deal. Played it. Played it two weeks ago. Beautiful golf course and and some of the best shape I've ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And they've cut some. They've cut down some of the trees that I hated. Well, good. It's easier to get to the green now. Number six. Mm. Lee Trevino. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Lee Trevino probably doesn't like it. I remember when that golf course opened and Lee Trevino was uh, here for the media day event and uh, some of us in the media got to walk along with him while he was playing the course. And he had the designer who literally had a, uh, a legal pad and a pen following along Lee Trevino and he was saying, uh, this trap here needs to be moved and you need to put a trap here. I mean, I mean, I'm serious. It was really funny. I don't, I don't like this trap. This trap makes no sense. Get rid of this trap and put a trap over here. Interesting. So you want to know how to design a golf course? Play around a round of golf with Lee Trevino. There you go. Uh, let's see some programming notes for you here. We have Greenville Grit tonight on 103.7 at 6.30 and on Cable 7 in Greenville, Washington, and Williamston. Uh, Greenville Grit. Grit. Greenville Residents in Touch. Tonight, uh, as always, our host Terry Williams and Michael Overton will be here from 6.30 to 7. And they'll be talking about the needs and wants of the new budget for the Greenville Parks and Recreation. And Greenville Parks and Recreation uh, Director Gary Fenton will be the guest tonight, 6.30 to 7, here on 103.7 Greenville Grid. They're also going to be talking about the Tar River Legacy Study. A lot of discussion still about what to do with the Tar River. And uh, my son Hank just uh, texted me and said it's number seven that I hate, not number six. But they've taken, I don't hate it anymore. They've taken down trees. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. It is number seven. He's right at the par five. Yeah. Uh, on greenvilleheadlines.com today, you need to go and read uh, Trent McGee's article. McGee, you did a great oh. job. We've got a, uh, Thank you. and I got a little bit juiced up and excited when I was reading this this morning because. Uh, it's the first real article that I've seen anywhere about East Carolina going into the uh, to the new AAC conference. And uh, Coach McNeil was on a national teleconference yesterday. You covered that and wrote a great story, and it's available right now at greenvilleheadlines.com. Thanks. Yeah, it's an exciting time for the Pirates. And, and you could tell Coach McNeil was, was really excited about what lies ahead for this program. And you, can, and you could clearly tell. He talks a lot about recruiting and how this move to the AAC is going to help recruiting, expand recruiting, and what the ESPN coverage now, which includes right now three Thursday night nationally televised games, will do for the program. And it really it, it, it make it puts ECU now much more thrust them, so to speak, into the national spotlight in terms of recruiting. So go to uh, GreenvilleHeadlines.com. Remember to make GreenvilleHeadlines.com a part of your daily trips to the Internet. If you're looking for local news, remember, and we're getting you never have to pay for the news. You never have to pay for anything on GreenvilleHeadlines.com. You need the news, but you don't need the newspaper. And and to go along with with Coach McNeil's teleconference and his comments uh, from that on Tuesday, we're slowly getting – Sneak peeks at some of the new uniform combinations coming out for the Pirates this season with the new logo and how the new uniforms, the jerseys may look. Saw some of that yesterday as well. So 
a lot going on with the football program. All right, very good. 19 after uh, the hour. Uh, sunny skies today. Rain coming in tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon late. And then uh, Friday morning is going to be heavy rainfall is what we're being told. And temperatures are only going to get into the 70s. And they're going to stay in the 70s for the weekend. But the weekend should be a nice uh, weather-wise. In fact, it's going to cool off. And Matt says it's going to be more, what was the word you used, seasonable? Spring-like. I want spring-like. So we're really experiencing yeah. temperatures too high right now yeah. for this time of year. Oh, yeah. Yep, this is... Uh, so we should be in the 70s, really. The only advantage we have is that the humidity isn't nearly as bad as what it's like in the summer. Yeah. But we're upper 80s, lower 90s. Yeah. Uh, before, we, uh, before we get to yeah. our news update and we, uh, and we get to... Um, we get to our interview with Representative Brian Brown on the first day of the legislature here. A couple of things. Uh, you talking about which one? You talking about this yes. one? Yes. Yeah, story. the Clay Aiken story, the uh, Keith Crisco thing. They there more a few more details coming out about uh, Keith Crisco's death, the uh, opponent in the Clay Aiken race. And uh, yesterday they determined that the vote count after the canvas was done that. It was not within one percent, and so there can be no recount in that anyway. So Clay Aiken is the uh, he is the nominee, and so we're going to have a Clay Aiken, Renee Elmer's general election in November. And um, the more details about uh, Keith Crisco, his wife came home apparently found him having fallen, must have hit his head, and. Um, that's how he died, but it's a very unusual situation, and um, the funeral for Crisco will be uh, in Ashboro on Friday afternoon. What would have very happened sad. had Crisco won? Do you do you know? Yeah, uh, I do because they were talking about you know if if it got back to a recount and he'd won, the um, the Democratic Party of the second district, the executive committee would have had a vote to determine whether or not Clay Aiken would have been the nominee. They could have picked Clay Aiken. Or they could have picked someone else. Mm. My my daughter, who lives in Charleston, had not been following this story, <laughs> and she somehow she picked up on a national website or one of the local websites. Might have been GreenvilleHeadlines.com. She was looking at the uh, websites for the area last night, and she texted me this. I, ne I need to read this to you, McGee. McGee, I want to show it to you so you can bear me out <laughs> that I'm telling the truth. She texted me yesterday evening at 7.12. Clay Aiken? Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's my I response, know. McGee? Oh. My response back. Read it, McGee. It's a great country, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> also in the News Observer this morning, uh, Rob Christensen political commentator for the News Observer with an uh, article this morning, a column about the Walter Jones-Taylor Griffin race. And um, a lot of the national media has been getting this wrong because they've been calling Walter Jones a Tea Partier, which I don't think that he is. I mean, Rob Christensen kind of gets it a little better, but he uses a couple of words here. He calls, uh, he calls, here he says, Jones, a soft-spoken 71-year-old pious man who, who sprinkles his conversations with God bless you, has always been hard to put into a box. Pious. McGee, Google. Google, I used, McGee. I, I used to know what that meant. What does pious mean, uh, Mr. Michigan upbringing? Anybody know what the word pious really means? I mean, it's not a word you hear very often. Pious? Yeah. Like pious in the face? <laughs> that kind of thing? Like I got hit in the face with a pious. How do you spell it? P-I-O-U-S. Yes, yes, yes. Pious. I hope it's positive. Devoutly religious. Oh. That is nothing. While you're pious. Googling, Google this word, too, because it says, Jones has, um, it, the word is op apostasy. A-P-O-T-A-S-Y. Me thinks that Rob Christensen was trying to impress us with his vocabulary today in the News Observer. It says, Jones has always polished his maverick status by bucking the GOP leadership on a number of votes, including the budget, debt ceilings, and Bush's no child left behind. His apostasy caused House leaders to throw him off the House Financial Services Committee. A total desertion of or departure from one's religion, principles, party, cause. Hmm. 
Don't say, use those big words. Those, well, those, two, those two words I don't understand what that are word accurate means. in Walter's case, but he could have used other words, so we would not have had to Google yeah. what the hell he was talking about. <laughs> Uh, Pat Buchanan, columnist, former presidential candidate, said that Jones is a principled peace conservative. I would say that's accurate. Consider what the GOP establishment and the Adelson Crystal Neocons are telling Republicans nationally with this wielding, with this, with this wilding attack on a venerable veteran of the Republican House. Buchanan wrote, "They are saying you can be for amnesty for illegal aliens." Support same-sex marriage, be pro-choice on abortion, and you can still be welcome to our party. But oppose foreign aid or resist the war party agenda, and you're a, her a heretic who shall be purged. And I'd like some of the people who emailed me uh, right after the election, some of the things that I said about the Taylor Griffin, Walter Jones rate, who still never did get who was behind all those attack ads on Walter Jones. They still don't get it. They were like, well, uh, I'm, I'm, for, I'm for Taylor Griffin because I'm part of the Tea Party. And I was like, seriously? I mean, and you're, you're with this, uh, you're with this uh, ending spending group that was uh, uh, the, one of the biggest uh, contributors to try to kill the, uh, the marriage amendment in California? I mean, I just, you know, they, yeah. do your homework, people. Back to uh, Christensen's article. Rush Limbaugh, the syndicated talk show host, saw Jones' nomination as a victory for the Tea Party, and he viewed it as a more significant than State House Speaker Tom Tillis' clinching the GOP Senate nomination. I think Rush got this wrong, by the way. I sent, yeah. I sent a message to Rush. He probably didn't get it. He may have. Rush and I have a mutual friend. And I sent a note. My I friend. Said, Rush, on great Rush got this wrong. Says, they came after Walter Jones with big money, and they failed, Limbaugh said. That's true. And I think that race is a little more indicative, A, of the strength of the Tea Party. I don't see it that way. I think a lot of the Tea Party people voted for Taylor Griffin. And B, public moods and attitudes and a predictor of future elections in North Carolina than what happened in the Senate primary. The establishment guy in North Carolina, Tillis, I think was his name, he didn't even get 50% with all the backing that the D.C. establishment. But he had eight. There were eight people in that race. He had a hard time getting for Anybody would have had a hard time getting 40%. See, Rush got that one wrong. Rush, you got that one wrong. I'm just saying. Just saying. 26 after. Let's get a break in. We'll be back. More talk of the town for Wednesday. And uh, we're going to get a report live from the legislature. Representative Brian Brown on the first day of the General Assembly. They will convene later today on Jones Street in Raleigh. What's up and what does it mean for Eastern North Carolina? We'll talk to uh, Brian about that coming back. Stay with us. It's time for your new truck at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease Motor Trends back-to-back -back truck of the year, the new 2014 Ram 1500 for just $139 a month. At East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess Station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess Stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Football fans, see the tradition, the excitement, the hard-hitting action this fall in Dowdy Pickland Stadium as the Pirates kick off their inaugural season in the American Athletic Conference and host in-state rival North Carolina. With a bowl victory and conference MVP at quarterback, the Pirates are poised for great things. We challenge you to be, live, and give undaunted as part of the fan base at second to none. Purchase your East Carolina football season tickets today by calling 1-800-DIAL-ECU or visit ecupirates.com. Yes, you can have it all. Quality flooring, expert assistance, free in-home estimate, professional installation. It's all here during the National Gold Tag Flooring Sale. And did we say lowest prices of the year? Dream it, plan it, live it today. Abbey Full Service Flooring, Fire Tower Road, Winterville.
Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on B. Stokes Road. It's a well-secured facility with a live-in manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. Come pick out your new Jeep here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Greenville. Check out the new four-door Wrangler and lease the new Grand Cherokee Laredo for only $2.99 a month at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Okay, it's 8:30. We're running behind. We got to move. We got to move. We got to move here. We got to go, baby. people. We got to go. I ran my mouth too much. Let's go to the news desk and uh, Maddie Engelbrecht standing by with our news update from WITN here on Talk of the Town. And uh, our news update this hour brought to you by Strawberries on 903. Here is uh, Maddie. Good morning. The time now is 8:30. On this Wednesday. You're doing this to spite me, aren't you? I'm mad at Breck. slow, yeah. These are, okay. I get it. I a get recently it. published Greenville Police report <laughs> showed two senior citizens were part of a small group robbed in their home at gunpoint. That report indicated the armed robbery happened at 132 Tuesday morning at 910 Howell Street in Greenville. According to the case report, three suspects armed with two guns came into the home and robbed the adults inside with a 38 caliber gun. Uh, the victim's age, uh, the ranged from 84, an 80, 84-year-old woman to a 54-year-old woman, a 70-year-old man, and a 50-year-old man. Uh, they were also present during the armed robbery. No injuries to the victims were reported. We are awaiting further information from police about possible suspects in the case. And just to jump over to some breaking news this morning, Goldsboro Police say they are now looking for a murder sub suspect they after they found a 42-year-old man shot and left to die along the side of the road. Investigators said they got a call around 10.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Uh, call around 10.30 Wednesday, shots fired. Uh, it's got to be 10.30 Thursday, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, of shots fired in the 100 block of uh, Irvin Drive. Police said they got there to find a man lying in a ditch with a gunshot wound while Wayne County EMS tried to save him. Police said the man soon died from the gunshot. Police said the victim was 42-year-old Doral Best of Irvine, uh, Irvin Drive in Goldsboro. Investigators are now working to collect evidence and talk to witnesses. Of course, if you have any information, uh, you can call Crime Stoppers, 919-735-2255. Uh, we'll have more on this on WITN and WITN.com. Henry? Okay, very good. Let's check our weather update. McGee has weather, mm -hmm. and uh, it's going to change tomorrow. What you got? Yeah, it is uh, partly cloudy skies for tonight. Lows in the mid-60s. Scattered showers, though, possible for your Thursday with an isolated shower storm possible for the afternoon. A high of 86 degrees as thunderstorms continue into Thursday night. A few clouds could contain heavy rain overnight. Lows in the upper 60s. And for Friday, morning thunderstorms, potential for heavy rain. Highs in the mid-70s. All right, very good. It's 833 now. Our news and weather update this hour brought to you by Strawberries on 903. It is strawberry time. And the strawberries are still very abundant and still they're very juicy. You been out there yet, Matt? Uh, no, we got some at the station the other day. Though. They're yeah. great. I think you got them because they brought them here and then Heather took them back there. Isn't that what happened? That's possible. Didn't Heather walk out of here with a bunch of my strawberries? I don't want to be accusing Heather of doing yeah. that, but maybe she did. I think she did. I'll ask her. May is peak strawberry season in eastern North Carolina, and uh, there's a little farm just outside Winterville where you can get the best strawberries you'll ever taste. It's called Strawberries on 903. It's just four miles south of Winterville. It's a great family spot. It's a working family farm. The kids love picking the strawberries, touring the farm animals out there. You can just come by, buy them already picked, or you can pick them yourself, which is a lot more fun. 
uh, my friends uh, Mike uh, Skinner and uh, Steve McLawhorn out there. They they're out there every day working, and they're there to answer your questions. They've got other seasonal produce including asparagus, hothouse tomatoes, cabbage, broccoli, lettuce, and more, even homemade ice cream. And they've got a picnic area for everybody. It's terrific. And uh, it's very easy to find. Uh, the hours are 8 to 6, Monday to Friday, Saturday 8 to 4, Sunday 1 to 5. Today might be the good day to go out there because mm -hmm. the rain's coming on Friday. They're located four miles south of Winterville. Just turn away from town on 903. Go four miles. You can't miss strawberries on 903. And if you do, more for me. <laughs> we've been and having me. we've been having them almost every night. I mean, we've been putting the you know my wife serves them sprinkles. There's something the, you can do with them. The Splenda on it, and then uh, a little whipped cream yeah, on it. Yeah, my wife puts them in a little glass bowl. That's what I'm and talking just Splenda. about. Yep. All right, let's go to a break. We've got uh, Representative Brian Brown coming up next at the legislature as the General Assembly convenes today. We'll be right back. It's time for your new truck at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Lease Motor Trends back-to-back -back truck of the year, the new 2014 Ram 1500 for just $139 a month. At East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. At the law firm of Hardy & Hardy, we don't simply take cases. We take your case personally. I've been in several car accidents, and each time I've turned to Hardy & Hardy for help. They are honest, hardworking, and dependable. I've been satisfied with the conclusion of each case, and I would recommend Wayne and Charles Hardy to my family and friends. You matter to us. Protecting the rights of the seriously injured. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. And we're back at Boyd's Carpet in Winterville on Fire Tower Road. I'm standing here with Jason Boyd. Jason, beautiful, newly remodeled showroom here. Tell us about it. Well, Hank, as we go into our 20th year here, we remodeled our showroom. We've got things kind of refixed up nice for everybody because it is the spring here in 2014. We want everybody to come see us. Of course, you know, we're located here on Fire Tower Road. Our phone number is 321-7066. We'd like everybody to come see what's happening here at Boyd's Carpet. And you've even expanded your staff for the spring. T tell, talk about your new staff. Well, last year was one of our best years ever, and we expanded our uh, staff to make it uh, more suitable for all our customers because we're offering more than just carpet, our wood, our ceramic tile, our LVT, and we want everybody to make sure that we do our shop at home service so we got plenty of people to serve you. And tell us about some special financing offers you may have available. Yes, come see us again for our 12-month financing with GE Card Service. So we're here at Boyd's Carpet uh, anytime here to serve you. Come pick out your new Jeep here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Greenville. Check out the new four-door Wrangler and lease the new Grand Cherokee Laredo for only $2.99 a month at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. The 2014 legislative session starts today in Raleigh on Jones Street. Let's go there now, live from the legislative building. Representative Brian Brown, who represents the 9th District here in eastern North Carolina. Good morning, Representative Brown. How are you? Good morning, Henry. I'm good. How about yourself? I understand you're on a tight schedule, and we're running late, and I apologize. So just late. Oh, you, you're fine. When you got to go, just yell, and we'll let you go. Uh, okay. it, Great to great to uh, talk to you. It's an exciting day. What time do these sessions uh, convene today? 
this one actually kicks off at noon today. So, uh, but there's a few things going on before that. There's some committee work that'll take place. Um, the House will do our confer- our press conference at 10:30 this morning. We'll 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 roll out our legislative agenda for the short session. So, um, it'll, it'll be a busy morning. And um, the of course uh, the teacher raises is what everybody's talking about. Uh, and and the the governor's budget uh, is it out yet? I, I guess it was either coming out last night or coming out this morning. Uh, the governor will actually roll his budget out at one o'clock today. Okay. Um, so so it'll be publicly announced today at one. So we're excited to uh, to get that and, and start to dive into it. And uh, you know he's been saying two percent increase in there for um, for school teachers across the board, veteran school teachers, and of course he, we already know what he's planning for new school teachers. No one will make less than thirty five thousand to start, and then a thousand dollars is what we're hearing uh, per employee. Uh, all government workers, and that's going to be upwards of two hundred and fifty million dollars, if if those numbers are accurate. Where is he going to get that money? Well, you know, I think that's yet to be determined. We will work through the process to, to figure those things out. Um, you know, we feel pretty confident that his budget has, has li- laid that out pretty clearly. Um, so, again, I'm, I'm very excited to see that budget and, and kind of work through those things. Of course, as it goes to the Senate and over to the House, you know, there will be modifications, as you can imagine. Um, but I think the overall consensus here in the General Assembly is, is that we have to give teachers and, and state employees uh, a pay raise and, and protect those jobs and, and protect those talented individuals. So. Uh, you know, you will see that come out of here. And, and you know, there's a lot of discussion regarding uh, the potential shortfall in revenues that, that from the projection side. You know, I don't think that's an enormous fear from our perspective. We've done a really good job in strengthening our government and, and really making it more efficient um, with a lot of cost savings across the board. So I think that, you know, although revenues may be a little short, our government's a little bit leaner here in North Carolina, so it should balance out, and, and, uh, and we should have a really strong budget uh, uh, tweaks here in the short session. The general concern, I think, uh, of course, a full disclosure, being on the board of governors, and you know, I have to, I have to, uh, I have to say, there's a, a, a real concern across college campuses in the state, particularly here at East Carolina, about more cuts. Uh, and you know, it just seems like the, uh, the the legislature and even the governor and Art Pope, the budget director, have have looked at the uh, university system every time there's they needed a, a few extra million dollars here and there. And I know uh, you have been at ground zero on trying to protect funding for the ECU School of Medicine. Um, what are your thoughts about that as we enter this session? Are there more? Is there more rocky water ahead for universities, and particularly as it as it relates to East Carolina? Well, I think that, you know, whenever you look at these type of, of, of budget things, um, it's always a low-hanging fruit. And historically, that's where, you know, they try to go and make those cuts. Uh, you know, I think that it's certainly something that's on the table. Is looking at ECU itself, we've really tried to do our very best of, of, of looking forward, trying to figure out what might be on the table for us to look at before it even gets put on the table, uh, to try to defer some of those things and, and, and make sure that we're not having to deal with them here in the short session. You know, of course, the UPL and SOCTA is continues to be the large conversation piece that, that we're trying to work through at the moment. I think we've solved that UPL piece and are now trying to work through the SOCA component. Um, we will certainly bring it back out of the House to, to try to restore some of that fundamental funding for East Carolina University's Broad School of Medicine. It's an essential component to their overall budget and, and means a great deal to our region. So we'll work very hard to try to restore those and, and, and start to have those difficult conversations with some of our counterparts who, who just believe that it's bad policy. We had the governor in town yesterday you were here for his press conference uh, I had an opportunity to meet uh, the, uh, the chancellor at ECU and I had a chance to meet along with some other folks uh, with uh, the governor yesterday I think uh, you know we're, we're finally making the sale Brian to some of the leadership in Raleigh that didn't understand the difference between the Brody School of Medicine and the UNC School of Medicine because uh, in Chapel Hill the, uh, the, the, the they, ha- they own the hospital the university owns the hospital and the medical school here it's much different and the funding mechanism for the med school here I mean we have to depend on the legislature to come through that's right. You know, and, and very different. Not only do we not own our, ho- our own hospital, but we have a really great public-private partnership with our hospital that's very different than any other place in the state that's very significant. It means a whole lot to our Brody School of Medicine. Uh, making leadership to fully understand what takes place over in our region has certainly been a task, but like you said, I think that they're really starting to see the differences, but not only the differences, but the value. The value that the Brody School of Medicine brings to our state and to our region um, with, with educating primary care physicians, 
putting them out in the field and keeping them right here at home. So that investment that our taxpayers make in them is staying right here in our own backyard. And I would have to say that uh, the governor was very supportive of that yesterday. And uh, with a little arm twisting, so has Art Pope been after we under, uh, have, have help, helped him understand uh, some of the things. I know you're going to have to leave uh, here in a minute or so. Uh, what's on your agenda? What do you want to accomplish in this legislative session? Well, like everyone else, we want to look at the, not just teacher pay, but I'd like to really look at the state employee side. You know, I say it all the time, but our state troopers have been out uh, working. You know, we have state troopers out in the field that's been there six years, still making 30000 a year, putting their lives on the line every day. We want to make sure that we protect those guys as well. Um, from a local perspective, there's a couple local things that we really want to kind of deal with. Southwest Bypass is definitely on the on the legislative agenda for myself, and, and really just looking at protecting funding for ECU and really starting to push forward with, with you know, a very good return on our investment, which is our community college system, and strengthening PCC and making sure that their fundamental uh, you know, revenue streams are protected and grown. Brian Brown at the legislature this morning. Uh, I know you got to go to a meeting. Uh, you've been heavily involved in that. I had some other questions, but we'll hold them for another time, and I'll let you go uh, and get to your Sounds committee good. meeting this morning. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. Thanks, Henry. Have a great morning. All right. And again, we did this last week. Congratulations on your primary win, Representative Brian Brown. Thank you very much. Uh, who represents the 9th District here in eastern North Carolina, all in Pitt County. Uh, and um, uh, interesting uh, discussion about what's going on in the legislature today. All right. It's uh, quarter till. Let's take a break. We'll come back. McGee's got sports and more as we roll through our Wednesday Talk of the Town. Where were you? It was about 4.30. I'd come home early for our anniversary. Then the call came. It was the doctor with my results. The last thing I remember is hearing those three words, you're cancer free. All across Eastern North Carolina, Vident Health Cancer Care Specialists and Navigators offer a team approach to detecting, treating, and beating the disease. Call Vident Health for Cancer Care. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company will deliver a storage unit to your home or business today. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile storage units 8x15 or 8x10 delivered to your site. If you are remodeling your home or office or need to store merchandise and inventory at your business, you need to call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. We deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy and there's no need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people you know. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage is located in Pitt County on Beast Oaks Road. It's a well-secured facility with a living manager. Fixed units range from 5 feet by 10 feet to 40 feet by 40 feet. We store boats, cars, anything you need. We are Pirate Supporting Pirates. Call Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage today at 321-2300. That's 321-2300. You don't have to be a professional golfer to enjoy giving to a great cause. Come out and join us Friday, June 6th at the Ironwood Country Club for the 5th Annual Mac Attack Golf Tournament, presented by the Junior Women's Association of Greenville. All of the proceeds go directly towards providing support for families of the two Ron McDonald houses right here in Greenville. Visit our official website or like us on Facebook to find out how you can participate in the event that's both fun and rewarding. It's time to put a stop to your high car payments during our Toyota Time Payment Reduction Event at Greenville Toyota. Time for a loaded new SE Camry with leather, alloy wheels, rear spoiler, and more. Put down up to $3,500 and we'll match it. The balance you pay is just $18,946. Time to reduce your payment with a new Corolla, just $139 a month. That's less than five bucks a day. And time for lifetime covered maintenance with the Greenville Toyota Advantage. Don't let time pass you by during our Toyota Time Payment Reduction Event at Greenville Toyota. Twelve minutes in front of the hour. Welcome back, uh, talk of the town, and um, 
Thanks to Representative Brian Brown for his comments this morning. Sounds like it's a busy week. I wanted to ask him a little bit. There's already some disagreement between the Senate and the House on this autism insurance bill that's uh, been thrown out there. may hear a little bit more about that later in today's uh, reports from the legislature. Of course, we'll be all over it. And don't forget, we are working on our uh, live broadcast from the legislature. I think we're going to probably do it around the second week in June. We've already been in contact with... uh, the folks at the science of uh, the natural science uh, museum of natural science on Jones Street, right across the street from the legislature, in the Daily Planet Cafe. It's where we did it last year, and uh, it was pretty cool. And um, it's really neat because um, we were worried we would not get um, the, you know the guys to walk across the street. They were they were asking us if they could come on. It was kind of <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. So we'll try to get the governor on while we're in town and uh, Senator Berger and uh, Tom Tillis. I think Tom Tillis might be okay with getting some extra media exposure right now. I'm sure he wouldn't turn that down. And we'll do our Live at the Legislature program coming up uh, in June. More to talk and uh, more to tell you about uh, that as we move forward. Uh, Ten minutes in front. Of, did you see the story? I was just uh, texting with my son about this because did you see the story about the little bouncy house? that had the three kids. They're like 10-year-old kids. One of them was even younger than that, I think. Um, did you see this, Michael, or Coach? This, this little, uh, that was one of these, uh, these bouncy, not like the big ones that you see at the county fairs or at the festivals around town, but like one that um, is just in someone's yard. I think my, I actually think. Like you think, would see over at, 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 a, at the Moe's they put out sometimes. Uh, not that big, a oh, smaller oh. one. My, my grandson actually has one. He got it for Christmas last year, and he loves that thing. But um, and it, th- there was one uh, yesterday that a, a freak wind storm came in. There were three kids playing in this bouncy house. The guy had it. He had it nailed down with uh, in into the ground with stakes into the ground, but they just have these little plastic stakes to hold it down. But this wind storm kicked up, and these kids were were it, it was like it was like the scene in the Wizard of Oz when the house goes, you know, swirling into the air. The thing went fifty feet into the air with these kids in it, and eventually threw them out. Jeez. One, uh, two of them were hospitalized. One of them wasn't hurt badly, but uh, two of them were hurt pretty badly and hospitalized. One of them actually fell on a car. It actually took it two blocks down the street and and hit a school. It's just it's wow. just a, it's and there is uh, there's not video of it, but there are photographs that people took of this thing in the air. They saw this bouncy house fifty feet in the air. Think about fifty feet in the air. That's hard to even envision. It was really high in the air, and these kids are in it. That's I've never seen anything like that before. Very fortunate these kids weren't killed. So that was really weird yesterday. Hmm. The, the other story that came out that was so disturbing yesterday here from eastern North Carolina was, did you see this on WITN and other places about the Perquimans County family? This that is- there were like five brothers and the parents have been arrested. Up near Hertford. You got that up? You can pull that up? Um, yep, getting there. Apparently, they've been sexually, all of them have been arrested. Now, I don't know if, you know, the parents have just been arrested because they, because they, you know, uh, have, have covered it up or whatever. But the five brothers, and two of them have now uh, come forward and admitted it. They've been sexually assaulting and raping their sister since she was four years old. And uh, she's now 15. Can you imagine that? How in the world does something like that happen? Five, and, and finally, one of the brothers talked to his pastor about it and um, came forward and admitted it. And then, uh, and then uh, apparently it got to the police. And the police investigated, and they've been investigating it for a while now, but they finally got the goods on these guys, and two of the brothers have now admitted doing it. Have you got the story there? I do. It it's, it's, makes your stomach It's sick. It but but the parents have been arrested, too. Yeah, they have. Is it five brothers? Is that it's, right? It's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six brothers. Yeah. 
Six are seven. they all older than the the the, the girl? Uh, they look to be yes. It doesn't give each one. That is age. just that is just absolutely frightening that something like that could happen. Oh my god! What in the hell are they thinking? They're not. They're I just not. I don't think I've ever heard of anything like that before. I don't uh, not not to that scale. No, that that's just awful. You hear that about you know you, you, you and and you know let's hope that young lady gets the help that she needs. And let's hope that the people involved in this, and of course, some of the, uh, the, the you know, the, the, uh, they were obviously young when they started all this stuff, but they started uh, sexually assaulting this young girl at four years old. I can't even imagine such a thing. It just, it just blows me away the evil that that's out there sometimes, and you just get, you, you just can't believe the, the things that you hear. That happened right here in Eastern North Carolina. We're going to be hearing more about that. That'll be a Dateline story, uh, probably. All right, place, um, five minutes before the hour. Don't forget, at this time tomorrow morning, you're going to need to get ready to dial because we're doing our half-price-off golf sale for Ironwood Country Club, and it starts tomorrow morning. So get ready tomorrow morning. Ironwood Country Club. We're going to sell two rounds for $50, and that includes cart. And it's 25, that's 25 bucks a round. It's half-price at Ironwood, the Lee Trevino course here in Greenville. If you, uh, Father's Day is coming, be a great Father's Day gift. You're going to have to have a credit card, and you're going to have to dial us at 9 a.m. Thursday morning into our Greenville studios here. The number, is, the main switchboard number, 252-355-8822, 355-8822. All right, let's check some sports headlines now. Here's McGee on sports. ECU baseball from Tuesday night, the final non-conference game of the 2014 regular season, and the Pirates came out on top 7-4 to four over High Point. A career night for a former Conley standout and current ECU freshman right-hander Davis Kirkpatrick, who struck out a career-high 10 batters on the night. And Drew Reynolds led a trio of Pirates with multiple hits, including a three-run shot in the sixth. To pad that lead, ECU closes out their 2014 regular season slate this weekend. Ashwood starts Thursday night, May 15th, against UT San Antonio. ECU senior pitcher Ryan Williams has been named to the 2014 Greg Olson Award watch list, which is given to college baseball's breakout player of the year. Williams is one of 80 players and one of three Conference USA pitchers named on the initial list. High school baseball and softball playoff action from Tuesday on the softball side. Pine Forest ousted Conley 3-2. South Granville ended Aiden Grifton's season 6-0. Uh, the boys' uh, baseball fare much better here in Pitt County. Conley over Jack Britt 7-6. Rose got by Southview 6-3. Aiden Grifton over Bettingfield 7-2. And North Pitt, the only Pitt County team to fall. They fell to first flight 10-6. Carolina Panthers Pro Bowl defensive end Greg Hardy was arrested Tuesday on misdemeanor charges of assault on a female and communicating threats following an early morning dispute with a 24-year-old woman at Hardy's Uptown apartment. The 25-year-old Hardy was booked Tuesday afternoon when he turned himself into police. This, according to a police statement, he spent Tuesday night in jail. And the ACC announced on Tuesday that the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament Championship game would be played on Saturday night, just as it was decades ago. For the tournament's first 28 years, the championship game was on a Saturday and on a Saturday night in 27 of those 28 years. All right, uh, 8.57 now, a couple minutes in front of the hour of 8 o'clock. Uh, Talk of the Town brought to you this morning by Greenville Vital Signs. And if you haven't been to Greenville Vital Signs yet, we invite you to go uh, check it out. Greenville Vital Signs is, um, is our new website uh, that uh, really is about all of the medical community in Greenville. And you can uh, click on it, and you'll learn a lot about what's going on in the Greenville community. It's an online community health fair, and uh, it's sponsored by uh, all sorts of uh, different medical practices, including Atlantic Gastroenterology. On there, you'll see a video with uh, Dr. Sturgis and Dr. Ray Fountain from Atlantic Gastroenterology, Pirate Pediatrics. Got an interview on there. Uh, vi- these are videotape interviews uh, with Dr. Uh, Morgan from Pirate Pediatrics uh, and also Vidant Health and their uh, cancer care team. Uh, the, the, a lot of great stuff uh, and, and more coming, including uh, 21st Century Oncology, Carolina Radiation Medicine, Eastern Orthodontics, and I'm probably missing some, but go to GreenvilleVitalSigns.com or you can find it on the uh, cover of GreenvilleHeadlines.com, where today the lead story on GreenvilleHeadlines.com is Trent McGee's story about East Carolina's uh, Ruffin McNeil on a national teleconference yesterday 
talking about the Pirates' entry into the new AAC conference. Season's coming up right around the corner. Great article, by the way. Thank you. Getting a lot of hits on it. Thank you. Go, go read what uh, what uh, Trent wrote about Ruffin McNeil's first teleconference in the AAC yesterday. And I meant to mention this, too, and I did not. It, for a long time, when I was working here with you, I was also doing some work uh, part-time at a golf course uh, in Edgecombe County. And there was one kid there that worked his butt off every single day. Nicest young man you'll ever meet. Love him to death. And uh, I've watched him kind of come up since he's been, I don't know, 10 years old. He goes to Southwest Edgecombe now. He's, he won the 2A uh, North Carolina 2A golf championship uh, over Newton uh, Conover's player, Cole Jeffries, state champion. Happy for him. Good for him. Yeah. Congratulations really cool to, to him. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, have a great Wednesday. Remember, the uh, weather's going to change dramatically Thursday night, and uh, we're going to have a washout on Friday morning. Temperatures are going to change. going to be in the 90s today, maybe mid-80s tomorrow. But uh, for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, temperatures only in the mid-70s. The weekend looks good, but don't plan anything Friday morning until about 2 o'clock, probably something like that. See you tomorrow.